Well, our guest today is Mr. Yukio Amano, Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency since 2009, following a very distinguished career in the Japanese Foreign Ministry, head of the Disarmament, Nonproliferation and Science Department, member of a number of UN expert panels, and a very active and effective delegate at successive nonproliferation treaty review conferences over a very long period. So, welcome to ANU, and it will be delightful to have you today doing our annual John G. Memorial Lecture, which is a tradition established in this university uh, to have people who speak on arms control and disarmament related issues, which is of course your specialty. So, Mr. Mano, can I begin by asking you, you've had a pretty tumultuous time over the last eight years with Fukushima catastrophe in 2011, the Iran nuclear deal, very controversial, coming to a head in 2015. You've had the nuclear security summits wrestling with the issue of dangerous nuclear material, and locking it up and away from rogue states and terrorists. You've had the issue of the Non-Proliferation Treaty Review Conferences, very successful in 2010, but very disappointing in 2015. With that and many other things on your plate, what has been your biggest challenge or a number of your biggest challenges over the eight years that you've been in the job? There are a number of issues and um, Iran nuclear issue has been uh, on the top of the agenda for many years. And there have not been any uh, progress uh, in the beginning years, but fortunately uh, since uh, 2013 uh, we uh, witnessed some changes and last year uh, we could um, uh, reach here uh, I mean, uh, the five countries plus one and um, uh, Iran reached agreement. And uh, there was also a bilateral agreement between Iran and IAEA. We are now monitoring and um, uh, verifying uh, the agreement. This is one example, uh, but um, uh, we made uh, progress in the area of uh, nuclear safety, nuclear security, and um, uh, currently, very important issue for us is uh, to uh, contribute uh, to uh, the attainment of uh, sustainable development goals uh, which were just adopted last year in the United Nations. Well, no doubt you'll be talking about those SDGs and the nuclear dimension of that in your speech, but let's concentrate on a couple of the other uh, issues, beginning with the Iran nuclear deal. How confident can the rest of the world be that the monitoring and safeguards uh, machinery that has been put in place as part of this deal will in fact ensure that there is no breakout? Uh, from uh, the verification point of view, uh, we have uh, now a very um, uh, strong uh, tool uh, to verify and monitor the agreement. Uh, the normal uh, comprehensive uh, safeguard agreement uh, is fully implemented and uh, additional protocol, a um, uh, very uh, powerful verification tool is now in place. On top of that, uh, we have um, the uh, transparency measures uh, agreed in the uh, Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. Um, on the other hand, uh, the nuclear activities of Iran has reduced uh, in uh, dimension and nature. So uh, we have more powerful tools for verification uh, to monitor and verify uh, the uh, reduced activities of Iran. So from the verification point of view, this is a, a net gain. Uh, we have uh, the uh, well-trained, experienced uh, inspectors, and um, uh, now we are allowed to use our capacities. Uh, so we are very confident uh, that we can discharge our responsibilities. Well, a lot of eyes are going to be on you over the next few years, and I guess we're all just got our fingers crossed that that will hold together, notwithstanding the sometimes very difficult politics uh, of this. But look, on the issue of uh, safety and security, which you mentioned, there's a report just come out in the last few days about the Government Accounting Office in the United States doing a little experiment in seeing how easy it was for a potential rogue group to gather up cesium-137 or other radioactive material, uh, the makings of a dirty bomb. For all the effort that's gone into President Obama's nuclear security summits, uh, four of them now, do you think we're really making progress in addressing this concern about the, re the re reasonably ready availability of this material? And this um, I am very confident uh, that uh, progress has been made. A very uh, good example is uh, the entry into force of the amendment uh, to the convention related uh, to the nuclear security. Uh, uh, the amendment uh, uh, 
widens uh, the scope on uh, nuclear uh, facilities uh, and material in the territory uh, will be subject uh, to uh, the control in the future. Uh, the amendment was um, uh, uh, agreed in uh, 2005, but it has not entered into force for such a long time, and just um, uh, recently it entered into force. Uh, we are uh, the depository of this amendment, and uh, we are looking forward to help countries uh, to impl implement it. This is only one example, uh, but uh, we have provided more than 3,000 um, equipment uh, for the detection. We have trained uh, border guards, uh, we have trained uh, custom officers, and uh, we are collecting uh, the information on illicit trafficking of um, uh, materials. I am not saying uh, that uh, we are perfect, uh, but um, uh, it is um, very uh, certain uh, that progress has been made. Uh, we need more cooperation uh, from countries. Uh, we need more countries ratify the, the amendment and strengthen uh, their activities. At the end, um, strengthen uh, the, uh, the nuclear security is uh, the responsibility of uh, countries, and IAEA is uh, in a position to help them. Of course, nuclear security and safety became very big issues, both of them, in the aftermath of the Fukushima, uh, Fukushima disaster. Uh, and it's also made a considerable impact on civil nuclear energy programs, particularly in Europe, where many governments have been very spooked by <coughs> that experience. In your judgment, does civil nuclear energy really have a major future, or are we going to see a jump straight into reliance on on other renewables like solar once the technology of batteries and so on can be established. I mean, has nuclear had its day or does civil nuclear have a big future? Uh, the Fukushima accident uh, was um, a huge accident and it uh, gave a negative impact to the confidence of uh, nuclear power. Uh, however, after um, uh, the accident, uh, the uh, ministers um, agreed a dec declaration. Action plan was agreed um, uh, at um, uh, the IAEA conference, and uh, that have been implemented. Uh, so uh, the nuclear safety has been uh, strengthened, and we have learned a lot of lessons. What we can say now is that the safety culture has strengthened by far. Uh, at present, uh, no one questions uh, the uh, concept safety must come first which was not the case in the past. And um, um, if we look at uh, the facts, uh, the um, 65 uh, reactors are under construction in the world now. Uh, we make estimates every year, and uh, our estimates, um, uh, even after Fukushima Daiichi accident, shows uh, that uh, many countries uh, continue to include uh, nuclear power in their energy mix, and uh, we foresee uh, increase a uh, steady increase um, uh, by 2030. Um, nuclear uh, renewables have a lot of advantages, uh, but uh, like other sources of uh, electricity and energy, it has disadvantages. Uh, each type of uh, energy has advantages and disadvantages. So uh, the traditional wisdom uh, is to achieve uh, the best mix of uh, energy. Should Australia go down the path following the South Australian Nuclear Royal Commission of establishing a big international high-level waste depository, how significant a contribution would that be making to global efforts to solve this problem? I have um, visited Adelaide before and had a meeting uh, with uh, the Premier, Mr Weatherill. And um, uh, I'm very grateful uh, that uh, I was updated uh, on uh, the latest progress. Uh, we understand uh, that um, uh, South um, Australian government uh, is, um, uh, um, has completed uh, the report and now uh, the government, uh, the South Australian government, uh, is in the process of uh, consulting with uh, the citizens. Decision has not yet made. And uh, um, after um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the South Australian government makes a decision, it will be brought to the attention of the central government. Uh, the role of uh, the IAEA uh, for now, we don't have the position and we do not intervene in the, in the decision of member states and uh, we are following um, uh, closely uh, this uh, development. Um, but um, uh, if um, uh, this um, uh, idea 
uh, takes shape, uh, uh, there will be relevant elements um, uh, for the IAEA, like safeguards or safety or liability or nuclear security. I was hoping you'd be a little bit more enthusiastic than that, because after all, this is not something that's just a, a commercial venture in Australia's interest. It is potentially in the world's interest, given the intractability mm -hmm. of the waste disposal problem. Mm -hmm. Surely you're reasonably keen to mm. see a few more players come mm. into the game when it comes to mm. effective disposal options. Uh, I think many um, um, uh, countries um, are following uh, the development uh, of this idea, uh, including uh, us, and uh, um, uh, as some the um, uh, development takes place or progress makes uh, place, uh, this will attract more attention, I think. Let me just finish up by asking you about the Non-Proliferation Treaty and the Review Conference disappointment of 2015. <coughs> because of the perceived foot-dragging on the part of the nuclear weapon states when it comes to their Article 6 disarmament obligations, this continues to meet a lot of resistance and create a lot of difficulty in getting consensus at the review conferences on strengthening, certainly, the NPT regime. And we've seen that scenario play itself out. Do you feel that the NPT itself, the treaty regime itself, is at risk as a result of that failure to get consensus about moving forward that's been evident in 2015? I do not think uh, that, uh, that uh, the treaty itself uh, is some um, in danger. Uh, it um, continues to offer um, uh, the cornerstone uh, for the uh, global um, uh, non-proliferation uh, regime. Uh, but uh, it is, it's a pity uh, for us uh, that um, uh, the peaceful use of, of nuclear technology uh, has not uh, received uh, sufficient attention. Uh, NPT has uh, three pillars and um, um, peaceful use uh, is uh, one of the important uh, issues. So uh, we would like to do more uh, in contributing for the use of nuclear technology uh, by member states. Well, I'm sure we're going to hear more about that part of the story from you in the lecture you're about to deliver. But one very last question about the humanitarian consequences movement, which must resonate with you as a Japanese national and bearing the scars still of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. You are aware, of course, of the worldwide movement by many, many countries to try and get new momentum into the disarmament debate, the Article 6 debate, if you like, based on that humanitarian dimension. What's your view about the desirability or utility of beginning discussions on a nuclear weapons convention to ban outright nuclear weapons at this stage? Would this be productive, counterproductive, or just unproductive? Uh, the IAEA um, uh, uh, is some, uh, in support, or myself, uh, uh, including myself, is in support of um, otherwise free from uh, nuclear weapons. And um, uh, we are supporting uh, the non-nuclear weapon free zones, and uh, we are making uh, expertise on uh, verification available uh, to implement uh, the uh, disarmament, nuclear disarmament agreements. Uh, but uh, we are not um, uh, the negotiation uh, body of uh, nuclear uh, disarmament, uh, but we are very happy uh, to make our experience and expertise available. Um, uh, uh, if um, they are relevant uh, to uh, the, the countries concerned. And well, it's great experience and it's great expertise that you represent and your agency represents. We are delighted to have you here at the Australian National University and we wish you well for the continuation, remainder of your term and for future terms as the Director General of the IEA. It's a very, very important international body and its leadership and the commitment that you've shown to these issues is tremendously significant for the future safety and sanity of the world. So thank you very much, Mr. Amano. Thank you very much. Thank you.